Well, each week, a group of insiders joins me to offer perspective on some of the week's top stories. This week, sounding off on Indigo launching its uh, long-awaited red line. It's now legal to play sports bets in Indiana and honoring Andrew Luck. Those stories and a lot more we will be chatting about. I'm pleased to be joined this week by IndiePolitics.org publisher Abdul Hakeem Shabazz. Also, content by Carter President and CEO Cam Carter and Hollowell Consulting President Jennifer Hollowell. And welcome one and all to the Insiders for another edition. Uh, we begin with the red line mass transit, the mass transit vision for Indianapolis and Marion County, uh, officially underway, uh, launched about a week ago with much fanfare. Um, Abdul, I'll start, start with you. Uh, this first month is free. Uh, just judging from the, the news coverage, the social media uh, um, presence, a lot of positives. Uh, yeah, over, I think overall it's been good. I mean, you know, busy, full ridership, you know, that first opening week of the red line. They had a few hiccups sort of along the way as they were sort of, you know, kind of beta testing the line. I think the true test of the red line is going to be is what happened, A, when we're done with the, sort of the 30-day 30, 30 free ridership period, and number two, when sort of the newness kind of wears off. You know, will this get, you know, the people using mass transit that need to? And my concern has never been the people who live in Broad Rip and want to go drink in Fountain Square. It's more the those folks who live along the 38th, 42nd Street corridor who need to get downtown to those service sector jobs which this economy badly needs. And the thing is, will they use it? If they use it, then I know it's going to work. And then, you know, this obviously is the, the first phase. And will you really get that, that, uh, that indication of that workforce connection until these additional, you know, spokes and, and lines get mm -hmm. built out? And see, that's the other part of it, too, which is, once again, we're just in sort of in that, you know, this, in the shiny metal object phase. Where everybody likes it. But as we were talking about earlier before we went on the air, it's not so much the trunk, it's the branches that matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, your, your take on it. Because a lot, you know, a lot of... Um, a lot of supporters, but a lot of skepticism to leading up to the launch. Yeah, there is, and I think there still will be for a long time until we figure out mm -hmm. whether it is successful. Um, I do credit the city and Indigo and some of the organizations, the Indy Chamber, who really pushed for this. Mm -hmm. They did a great job with the rollout in terms of bringing attention, getting people on in the first weekend. Now we need to see, are they going to ride through the week and, and leave their cars at home for mm -hmm. work? But I've been surprised by the number of young people who I talk to who are excited about it and planning to use it every day. Interesting. And, and Cam, I was at uh, 18th and Meridian going, driving home um, uh, earlier this week, mm -hmm. and in a span of about 25 seconds, I saw an Indigo bus, a new bus, go by. I saw a couple of uh, bicyclists, people on bikes, uh, bike lanes, and then I saw some scooters. And I thought, you know what? This is a different Indianapolis. It's beginning that transition maybe to, to a different uh, connectivity mode, if you will. May we all be able to peacefully coexist. <laughs> There's a lot of different modes of transportation. Right, but right. I think uh, Abdul hit it on the head. This is uh, new and free are the most powerful words in marketing. Let's look at this a few fiscal quarters down the trail when uh, it's no longer free, when the novelty is worn off, uh, when the winter and the cold temperatures get here. Mm -hmm. But I have uh, every degree of confidence that it's going mm -hmm. to take off. There's no mm -hmm. major, thriving major metropolitan area in this country that doesn't have a decent public transportation system. Mm -hmm. This is a tremendous upgrade, but we've got to get that trunk and then get out to those branches. Yeah, and J Jennifer mentioned the launch and being a good launch by Indigo yeah, and the city, especially in light of the buildup the weeks before with the traffic and the 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 headaches that were were, were part and parcel of that process uh, leading up to it, and it, it turned out to be a nice, a good launch. Yeah, let's knock on wood, and I hope that uh, continues. You know, mm -hmm. no major un uh, undertaking like this is going to be without its mm -hmm. hiccups. Yep. Uh, another big launch, uh, actually the same weekend, sports betting uh, in Indiana now legal. Governor Holcomb placed that first bet or bets, uh, I think, uh, in Shelbyville. Um, Jennifer, as you look at that, um, I think a lot of people wondered when gaming became a, a, a possibility for states that Indiana, the, I think the expectation was Indiana might lag. Right. But actually, Indiana, in this case, is, is leading. Really leading. And, and it's, I wouldn't have predicted it maybe in the beginning, would hope for it. But uh, it's exciting that Indiana is leading on this. And so we've seen uh, companies like Caesars just is in the process of launching seven sports books in 19 days just in Indiana. So, and they've spent, you know, significant money renovating their facilities. 
Uh, and I think that the Shelbyville launch was mm -hmm. one of their biggest yes. um, launches in, in their company. I, so think it's, I think Shelbyville becomes the biggest sports book for Caesars outside of uh, yeah. Vegas. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly exciting, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, this is the next phase in gaming. There's been a lot of money left on the table. People have been sports betting for years and years, right? There's billions of dollars that, uh, that mm -hmm. have been happening kind of in the dark mm -hmm. over the last few years, and now it's out in the open. We're going to be able to seize that revenue, and once the mobile betting starts, which is going to come in a couple mm -hmm. of months, it's going to really be the yeah. ticket, I think, for new revenue and a boost for yeah. the state. Uh, Abdul, your take on it. You follow the state house, how, how it rolled out, and then what, what we're going to see, as Jennifer said, uh, you know, mobile uh, uh, betting and those types of things going forward. Uh, it was interesting because when I watched the, the whole gaming debate, not just the, the sports betting, but also the casinos and some of the other things that were taking place, sports betting was actually the low-hanging fruit. That was actually the easy one uh, for lawmakers to sort of sort of get behind and, and get around. Part of it because, like Jennifer said, it's been going on for so long. You're really not creating new gaming. You're just basically bringing above ground mm -hmm. what had been what had been underground. What I find fascinating in the last several years, Indiana has sports betting, Sunday alcohol sales. So can legal marijuana <laughs> be far far behind? You've been pushing for that for a long time, <laughs> Abdul. I know it can be very far behind. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Uh, switching gears now to the economy and uh, some stories and news this week, kind of reflective of perhaps a changing uh, economy. Nestle uh, announcing plans to close an Indianapolis plant, only about 170 workers. They announced uh, layoffs of about 40 workers in Fort Wayne uh, earlier. Uh, a lot of attention on, in uh, Elkhart and the, uh, the RV market, a uh, big story in the Wall Street Journal recently uh, about uh, RVs and the downturn there being perhaps uh, an indicator of what might be ahead in terms of, of recession. Uh, uh, Cam, as you look at it, is it, is it reason for concern? Uh, I hear I hear both. I hear people say, you know, not to worry about it, at least not next year. Yeah, I think there is reason mm -hmm. for concern. You know, there's some indicators there. Uh, you know, the inverted yield curves on mm -hmm. treasuries, the slowdown, but then you have uh, other data that's out there. Walmart lows had good retail qu quarters. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on, I think, what consumer spending does what the Fed will do in the future and you know how many of these are strategic moves by companies that are restructuring and trying to take advantage mm -hmm. uh, when you get into those logistics hubs which several of these projects uh, this week are, are involved with Indiana's central location and its ability to get to market mm -hmm. uh, and the consolidation of operations are, are very critical uh, one of these is kind of a, a labor story uh, mm -hmm. There's been a months-long strike. Yeah, Regal uh, Beloit. Not Regal, Regal, Regal Beloit. Yeah. They have a, a facility in Valparaiso. They also have one that's non-union mm -hmm. in Monticello, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So the jobs would, would move there, but they'd be non-union. So yeah. is that really an economic expansion, or is, is that a labor dispute? Uh, you know, remains to be seen. But I think yep. if you're not looking at, at a cautious flashing yellow light yep. on the economy right yep. now, you, 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 may, you may want to. Interesting. Jennifer, there are political implications, too, to an economic slowdown. Any, any thoughts in that regard? Well, I, I think it's hard to say for sure what's happening. Things have been right. so good for so long mm -hmm. that you do expect something to change. And, and the RV industry, which people look at it as an indicator, but if you listen to what some of those manufacturers are saying, they had such an increase in demand in 2017 that perhaps they overbuilt in 2018, and now things might kind of right size out by the end of this year. And so I think there's a lot of factors before we really know mm -hmm. where that's headed. Give you a final word on that. Um, I think uh, what this does tell us, though, is that uh, responsible fiscal management, particularly for state and local governments, is extremely important because you want to make sure you have the reserves on hand so when the slowdown happens, which we all know it will, the question is going to be, is it going to be a soft landing or a hard crash? Mm -hmm. Uh, Cam will give you the last word on, on Andrew Luck. Certainly, it's a big sports story, kind of a big story uh, overall. There's an Andrew Luck day. The city kind of saying thank you. Uh, there was there was critics out there. You think it's a good a good idea to to really honor this guy? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, I admired him when he was on the field. I admired the courage and something that's lacking in our society: wisdom mm -hmm. to take a hard look and in a very tortured decision, make the best decision for himself. Yeah. He, he owes uh, the city of Indianapolis nothing. He really delivered yeah. for us, uh, got us to all believe again. Looking forward to the next man up. Yep, but, and he's off know, the field. God, Godspeed to Andrew Luck and whatever he wants to do next and hopefully he stays here. And I think he'll excel in whatever field he enters.
Very well said. Cam Carter, Jennifer Hollowell, also Abdul Hakeem Shabazz. Thanks one and all. We'll be right back after this.